going to go to the uh, Ministry of Education for the city of Kandahar and find out uh, oh, what's going on with the schools and see if yeah. we can visit a school as well and talk to some of the teachers. Look at all these books. These books were first stolen by the Taliban and then they used them in their own madrasas or religious schools and now they've taken them back from the Taliban, they're going to sort them all out and uh, it will be part of the whole education but it won't only be religion anymore. These are also the Quran Quran. This is a holy Quran, and they're going to take these and add them to the pile of books they're going to put in that room and hand them over to the local authorities. What will she would It's nice to know that there are people that want to right the wrongs and get things moving. And I'm also smiling because these books were once stolen by the Taliban, and now they're back in the hands of the people they belong to. And they're going to be put to better use. He says it's about 10 or 15 days since they opened the schools, but they're starting from zero. And he's telling us we don't really have anything. He says they haven't even let it, left us a cup to put tea in. These are the, the talibs that we're teaching in the schools. Uh, this is their checkbook of the Taliban when they were running these schools. A lot of the money that should have been used for education, um, the Taliban were obviously looting and giving f uh, to people for other things. It's unclear what the funds were going out for, but what we do know is that these records are here and that the sums that we're leaving, the educational system, are ridiculous. Um, there's corruption here, absolutely. This is uh, our high school, and my dad used to be a chemistry teacher here for all the girls. She says that so far she's surprised that a lot of the fathers uh, are allowing their daughters to go to school and that a lot of these girls have come from faraway places in order to attend here. She's going through all of this trouble, walking an hour to school, coming here so that she can learn something, so that she can become something and she can be someone and she wants to be a physician. It seems that she doesn't understand, just like most of us, uh, why she wasn't allowed to go to school. The explanation she gives to me is that they just didn't like it and they wanted her to stay home. But I think like a lot of us and a lot of the girls here, nobody really understands why. Um, it just seems that it was a literal interpretation of the Quran and it was their form of oppression. Look at all the girls running now. Looking at their faces, I think they're definitely ecstatic to be here. I wish the Taliban could hear these girls now. We're here at Mirway's Hospital and we're going to see if we can meet with some of the bombing victims. This is male intensive care unit. We have uh, many uh, mine injuries, uh, cluster injuries, uh, hand grenade injuries, and unexploded uh, uh, ammunition injury. He describes that the Americans threw some kind of bullets on him. Apparently, it was shrapnel from some of the bombs that hit him. We're being told he picked something up after some of the bombardments and probably it was uh, undetonated. A lot of these kids, uh, they're kids, they don't know what they should pick up or not touch. Um, it's about this, uh, the mass of the flesh is gone. They realized that there were planes and helicopters hovering overhead. They were discussing whether or not they should wait for their friends, um, and then they heard a loud boom, um, and that took out the front of their car. 
He says that he's extremely depressed. He doesn't know whether he should be angry or not. What he does know is that he doesn't know if he's going to have use of his legs. It's been about five days since he's here. And he says that his mind isn't really working. I've taken the camera myself because there are no men allowed here. And I'm going to film one of the female victims of the bombings. This is Wimana. She lost five members of her family, and her brother lies in the bed next to her. She's been here for a month tending over her children, and that the doctors here helped them and helped amputate her son's penis. She's describing the five family members that she lost and all those injured. And she explains how she had to pick up the flesh off the ground of the body parts that were left over after the U.S. bombed their home.